Sixers are out of fouls. Johnson teeing off. Puts Ooh. it down. That was vicious. So break down that moment because that's, that's a big time play. Brooklyn Nets star Cam Johnson came past the studio as he breaks down some of his best moments from his NBA career. Johnson for the win! We also battled it out in an NBA 2K23 finals matchup. This is a really dope episode, don't go anywhere. Let's go Rush! So Cam Johnson, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for being here and first time in Melbourne. First time. You're in the best city in Australia, so congratulations. Oh, I'm sure Sydney's gonna have something to say about that. <laughs> I hear there's a little bit of rivalry there. All right, so I'm gonna start off by showing you a video and I want you to break down this moment. Okay. So take me back to that moment and what was okay. going through your head. So that was, that was a heck of a day. Um, it was the day after my birthday. Oh, wow, okay. All right. Um, I had a nice home-cooked meal the night before, and I finished the night with some, some ice cream cake. So I knew the next day was going to be a good day. Um, step on the court in the first quarter, okay? And I think probably the first possession, I get a, a shoulder to the rib by Julius Randle. Knocks the wind out of me, takes me out of the game for a few minutes, right? Not a great start. Come back in the second quarter. First, second, third possession in the game. Um, missed the whole entire first quarter. Okay, I'm coming back in the second quarter. I go up for a layup and get fouled, but I get kneed in the leg by Mitchell Robinson. So I'm like, all right, this is like, this is not a great start to today's game. Like, I'm, I'm just pissed at this point. And so, like, I kind of harbored this, like, anger in me the rest of the game. And um, I kind of just started to get hot. The shot started to go in. I was feeling good that whole entire week. Like I said, the ice cream cake was really giving me a boost. <laughs> and shots just going in, going in, going in. So we got to the second half, and I really started heating up, heating up. And then I got into a little scuffle with Julius Randle, um, where, you know, just some shoves, just some, you know, good old friendly competition. He ends up getting thrown out with two techs. I end up getting one tech, so I'm allowed to stay in the game. And continue to make shots, teams hanging around, teams hanging around. Then we get to that last play, right? We're hitting shots back and forth. We're narrowing like a five point lead down to one, two, three. We get it within what, two? Uh, we get it within one. No, I think. Okay, yeah, I think it was a one point game. They had the ball, we fouled Alec Burks. Alec Burks goes to the line, makes the first to go up two, and then he misses the second. Um, we had just let up a free throw rebound. So I was like, okay, come up with the rebound. First thing to do, come up with the rebound. We get the rebound. Mikel kind of just grabs it, like contested, whatever. He flips it to campaign. Campaign starts drilling up the court, and I kind of wheel out to the side, and I'm like, all right, I know he's going to find me. I'm going to hang back. So I kind of stop running. I wipe my hands. So I just went to box out. You can see me wiping my hands along my shorts, like, because they're sweaty. Uh -huh. And uh, I knew if I had a good look at it, that, you know, my, my likelihood of, of positive result was high. So I kind of wheeled in behind him, and he dribbled in, dribbled in, and flipped it back to me. And everybody who was in my area defensively kept going towards the hoop. It's a two-point game, so you have to kind of take away everything. Um, so I kind of sneak in behind. He pitches it back, and I let go of it. And the only thing I'm thinking is, like, don't, don't let it be short. Don't let it be short. Don't miss short. And I was definitely a little extra long. I banked it in. But, hey, you know, it went in, and, and, and I was able to uh, run away with that one. But, yeah, it was couple good plays all around that, that set me up for that. Oh, it was a great moment. And what I love the most is that you really took your time with the shot. You yeah. even had a little dribble. You got the yeah. ball two seconds yeah. ago, took a dribble, boom. So how do you handle the pressure? Like, have you got any techniques that you, you, know, you go about when you face a moment like this? Um, when you're in a moment like that, there is no, like, those specific moments, you don't really have to worry about much or think about much. You know, you're playing on pure adrenaline. You just get, sometimes you can find a way to just get lost in the game where like literally that's the only thing going on in the world. Nothing else matters. It could be zero people in the gym, you know? Um, but it's everything around that. Like to get to that point, you have to be locked in. You have to be able to learn how to control your breathing and learn how to find that rhythm. Once you learn how to find that rhythm, you can kind of just like, honestly go into some sort of like cruise control where you just let the game happen. And at that moment, like I, there was nothing going through my head. There was no like, oh my gosh, a game is on the line. This is going on, that's going on. It's just simply like, I have this opportunity. This is working out. I'm seeing what's going on around me and I'm just playing. 
And what I loved was your reaction too. You just hit the game winner and then you just kind of casually. Because I, like I said, there was some heat in that game. There was some frustration. So we were kind of chipping, you know, it was a little chippy. Uh, and that's how New York is, likes to play, which is cool, which is fun. Um, and we kind of just embraced that and, and, and we're able to come away with the W. And you also went for 38 points that yeah, night. Yeah. Pretty high, right? Yeah. Explain what it's like or describe what it's like being in the zone. Is oh, it it's just everything. <laughs> That's a, I ate ice cream cake for the next couple games in a row. It wasn't the ice cream cake in the end because I couldn't replicate that same result by simply eating ice cream cake. But, uh, yeah, you just kind of get lost in the game, man. It's like you can shoot the ball, feel like you can throw it behind your head and, and it'll go in sometimes and you just kind of ride that wave and that's kind of what we have to do as basketball players. Like the best shooters have to learn when to when to let it rip and, and find that rhythm and then also how to recover that if you lose it because it does go up and down. 82 games um, There's a wide range of results that you'll have throughout that process. But the guys who are able to to recover, to stop, you know, cold streaks to find a way to extend hot streaks are the ones that have the most success and what's it like when you go home that night because you know it was the day before was your birthday you yeah, hit 38 yeah, yeah. points it was you hit actually a game pretty winner. bad actually because uh adrenaline was pumping everything was going crazy but that that knee i took to the leg ended up being um a pretty devastating blow i had a crazy quad contusion as soon as i got home from the game i saw my leg just like swell up under my eyes i was like oh man it's not good so i ended up missing a handful of games after that because oh, yeah. of, because of that but interesting to look look back and think upon that game because i don't usually play angry that's not the type of like uh energy that i use when i play but that game was like just a lot of anger and you can ask my teammates at the time, like I was probably saying things that I don't usually say, um, you know, just in a different mode. And in that instance, you know, it worked for me, but I'm usually like very middle ground. I try not to get too high with the highs, try not to get too low with the lows, just try to be very steady and play kind of level headed. But that game was probably the main example of not playing, like just playing angry and using that. So it's, it's interesting. D different things were for different people. I haven't tried the full out anger approach like that again. And I don't know if that's like super sustainable. It just doesn't feel healthy to just be that angry all the time. So I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again next year. Uh, we're well, speaking of being angry. I'm going to show you another video. And I'm curious to get your reaction okay. on this one. Yeah. We'll get the other angle. So break down that moment because that's, that's a big time play. So that's game two of the playoffs this year. Um, and obviously we lost all four games, got swept. You know, it's never a, a good thing, but you learn a lot from it. Um, game one, I kind of find myself, found myself in a lot of positions where I was like, dang, like I, I, really, can, I really can find him beat the series. Like I, he comes to block everything. Like I know that if I time him up right, I'll have him. So I... Uh, I got that, I passed it, I think it was Seth. I passed it to Seth coming off a double. And this was the exact play. Like they played right into our hands. Like I was guarding me, stunted, got into the gap, tried to you know, stop his drive. He immediately flipped over to me and I had a full head of steam, clear path to the basket. Mm -hmm. So I put down that one dribble. I'm like, okay, I know I have an opportunity here. I put down that one dribble, I look over my shoulder because I know Embiid, he's always coming. He's always coming. So look over my shoulder, I'm like, ah, he's a step behind. Like he is not like, I'm not gonna have to literally go through him to get to the rim. If I get off the floor before him, he's in trouble, which is what it is. Like, a, it's like when you try to dunk on somebody, you gotta get off the floor before them. If they got off the floor before you, they're above you, and you can't, you literally just can't get through them. So I'm like, if I get off the floor before him, like he's gonna be in trouble. So I got, I had the look, I had the step, I had the jump, and then from there, it's just like, all right, like I, it's just, I just knew it. And then I didn't even know if I made the dunk, actually. <laughs> so I hit the ground, and there's a split second where I hit the ground and you can see I don't react at all yet. And I'm just like listening. I hear people. I hear the, the bench. I hear my teammates. I'm like, okay, I must have made it. And so then I go back on defense. Like, no, I don't have to look for the ball. <laughs> so I think I did that one time in college. Like I had a dunk and I wasn't sure if I missed it or not. And I'm like looking all over the gym and the ball's like on the floor. I was just taking it out. So I like just hit the ground and pause and I'm like, okay, I think I made it. And then I can get back on, you know, I can feel good about it, but you know. I was hoping they would, not hoping, but I was like, I kind of got fouled. So I was like, 
Are they going to call it? No, they're not. I don't care. Keep playing. Whatever. But you also had a really nice stare down after the that's, dunk too. That's, that was after I confirmed that I made the dunk. So it's like, all right, I made it. Because I, like, I don't like celebrate heavy. If you watch, like I, I'm not, you know, some guys are celebrating after every play. I, I maybe throw in two to three celebrations a season. You know, it has to be something big. So the stare down on the way back is like, is a lot for me. And what, because oh, I'm curious to know what happens after that. Once you do the stare down, does Embiid come up to you and you do a little trash? No, no, no. It's just part of the game. He's a center. He, he blocks people at the rim all the time. Sometimes he gets dunked on. It's the nature of the game. And what I love the most about you is that you play with no fear. So where does that attitude come from? Where do you get that from? Uh, there's no reason to play with fear. There's just none. You know, whatever the results are, the results are going to be. And you just try your best to, to make plays and, and help your team win. And, you know, it just comes from playing a lot of basketball over the years. That's cool. All right, man, let's get into some 2K. Let's get it. We're going to do an NBA Finals special. Currently, right now, the NBA Finals are, are wrong. Who do you got? I'm going for Nuggets. So I had Jamal Murray on the show a couple months ago. So, yeah. yeah. What about you? You're going for Heat, I can tell. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think the Nuggets, I said the Nuggets will probably win in five. At the beginning of the that series. That was my pick. Because I think the Heat, to win is a lot harder for them in this series than it was in previous ones because Aaron Gordon is a pretty good antidote for Jimmy. He can guard him pretty well. Big, physical guy. Um, Jokic presents so many problems. Jamal Murray has been absolutely cooking. You can't forget about Michael Porter Jr., who he hasn't been having the greatest series, but he is like, it doesn't matter. He's always a threat, and the Heat are always aware of that. Bruce Brown's been hoop. They just have a lot going for them right now. And for the Heat to be successful, it's not necessarily going to come from Jimmy this series as it was as much the other series. It's going to come from Bam, and Bam has had some really good games. And then it's going to be how much can Caleb Martin continue that steam that he had, how much can Gabe Vincent, which is a lot, Max Struess. That's, that's a lot to ask of any bas superstars, you know. Yeah. You see superstars that can't even produce that time and time again. So asking Miami's role players to produce like stars is just a lot. And they, you know, I... Figured they're capable enough to get at least one game out of it. But it's just Denver continuity, size, scoring ability. It's a lot to overcome for anybody. As you can tell, they're about to win a gym. <laughs> you really love basketball, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you watch a lot as an NBA player. Like, yeah. It's part of the job. Like Sitting there and just watching TNT and ESPN broadcasts every night. And just learning about what teams do and, and what makes them go. Yeah, that's cool, man. I can feel the passion. I mean, obviously, you're in the NBA, yeah. but I can tell you really know all That's the... a big part of it, and a lot of NBA players will say the same thing. It's like just understanding the game and understanding teams and personnel and what they like to do. Uh, it goes a long way in your personal production on the court and how you're able to in influence games. You, have a lot, you feel a lot better about a game if you know the, the team you're playing against. It's like just scouting on the day. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. All right, well... Let's get into the Let's game. Do it. So the one minute quarters is going to be a pretty quick game. Yeah. One question I do have is like, so once the, the season's finished for yourself, NBA finals are on, yeah. do you actually sit and watch the games or you're like, yeah. I've, I'm done? Um, so I'd say it really just depends. Um, last year when we lost with Phoenix, we lost to, we lost to uh, Dallas in game seven. We got blown out, which was just like a, a gut-wrenching way to end the season. I did not watch a second. I watched a tiny bit of the finals, but the, the conference finals on both sides, I did not watch a second. Like I couldn't tell you what happened in the game um, just because I was just so sick. It's the same thing with like March Madness when I would lose in college. It would just be like too painful, you know? Um, but this year I, I watched just, you know, I, I'm on the Eastern Conference side of things. It's different, it's new. Um, and I'm just, you know, I also just like watching. Mm -hmm. So I watched a lot more of this year. Okay, that's interesting. Since losing, cool. I watched a lot more and, and just, I wanted to see how Philly did against Boston and just see the dynamics of how the playoffs played out. And so I, I, I pretty much watched every 90% of the game so far. One thing I'm really curious to ask you, I'm going to show yeah, you a photo, yeah. see if you can remember this yeah. game. Yeah. You, you can see what I'm saying. I'm saying, Craig, <laughs> chill, Craig, chill. So what I want to know is, 
were you guys actually trying against the Adelaide 36ers? Because for an NBL team to go over and beat an NBA team is like unheard of. And when I heard the news, I was like, they mustn't have had the full squad, the Suns. Like, we yeah, man. Yeah, we're actually trying. We're never not trying. Like, mm. we're, we're professional basketball players. Um, now, we weren't, like, in terms of, like, substitutions and stuff, our goal wasn't necessarily, like, win this game at all costs. If the goal was win this game at all costs, we probably would have changed the way we saw it. Like, you know, Coach Mont wasn't necessarily trying, like, win this game at all costs, but it, it, we're basketball players. We were trying to win. But they made shots. We're like, what is going on? So... The, you showing me that picture. Do you do you know the guy in that picture? No, I'm not familiar with him. Very interesting that you showed me that one because his name is Craig, Craig Randall, and me and Craig, Aaron, right? We go back first grade. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> so me and Craig, that guy in that picture, we've pl been playing together since first grade. We are oh, like best crazy. friends as kids. Okay. His older brother played with my older brother. We were those kids that were running around hotels, like playing tag at, at, during AAU tournaments. Oh, crazy. Okay. So me and Craig played together all growing up. Um, he kind of moved away. He, he moved away to like Arizona when he was in high school. So I hadn't seen him too much since since the younger days. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is my first time playing against him in forever. And of course, he goes for like nine threes, just goes crazy, which I was super happy for him because like that can do a lot. Like you just put up 40 points against an NBA team. But in that picture, I'm like, yo, Craig, like just relax. Like you're doing way too much <laughs> right now. You're <laughs> you're killing us. <laughs> but yeah, that team, I mean, they made shots and made plays and mm. did enough to beat us. So I, I'm, I'm not going to take away any bit of credit from them. They, they played a heck of a game. And what was the mood in the locker room with the Suns after that match? Like, because I'm assuming you guys would have been like, ah, look, we're going to probably blow this game out by about 15 or 20. You know, it'd be a nice little So after up. the game, the co our coach comes into the locker room. He's like, Yo, this like I'm not concerned about this game. He's like, obviously the stuff we need to fix, but like we're cool, and nobody really. We're like, dang, like we know that the House of Highlights and the ESPNs are gonna take this and run with it. <laughs> yeah, okay. TikTok definitely did. <laughs> TikTok, and we know that like that was our first game on the court together after being blown out in the game seven. <clears throat> so we know teams are. I mean, like people are gonna be like, oh my god, the Suns are falling apart. Or like Joe, it'll just just block out that extra stuff because in the NBA and any professional league or any high level of anything, there's always just extra noise that you have to block out. And I saw that you were playing golf the other day with Aussie Jock Landau. Yes, What's sir. the relationship like with him? Great, great dude. Um, I think he's from out this way, right? He's, I think he's from Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne area. boy. Yeah. yeah, great dude. Uh, Australian to the core. I love it. Um, he's funny. Um, great guy, great. He was a great teammate, and 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 you know uh, we get on the course from time to time. That's cool. And how are you adjusting Brooklyn life just in general, like off the court, being back in a, a big city? It's a change, man. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a change. I settled into Phoenix. You know, I, I got used to that that weather, the space of it. Brooklyn, there's a lot of positives that the city has for mm -hmm. sure. Um, great food, lots of cool people, lots of cool things to do. Um, but it is busy. It's busy and there's always a lot going on and, and there's not that much like uh, grass, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, <Well> concrete. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's cool though. Great organization. They've been fantastic so far. Uh, the guys have been great. So it's a pretty cool place to play. No doubt. And I've had Patty Mills and Seth Curry on the show. Yeah. Have you had much of a, an opportunity to get to know those guys yeah, off man. the court? Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool guys. Um, and and both talented basketball players and and patty is definitely a guy that that people rally around mm -hmm. um and, and you know it's fun playing with him did patty give you any tips for australia i know he's a big coffee kind of guy and melvin's famous for the coffee didn't no he didn't give me too many just you know he he said i'd enjoy it so it'd be a lot of fun um and and, and that's about that you know mm -hmm. but yeah okay good cool guy. all right i'm just conscious of the time so i'll just ask you actually i'll show you another photo let's go <clears throat> What's your shoe collection like? So when I was little, I was a huge like sneaker head and I've actually kind of cooled off as I got older, you know? So I don't like, I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to keep up. I'm not trying to like be like my shoe collection is the best shoe collection, but I'd still take pride. in it. I still love my shoes. I still, um, you know, get, get the shoes that I want and, and that stuff. But my, the ones that are closest to me are probably like my UNC PEs from my last couple of years in college. Um, just because, you know, one, they're really cool. They're pretty rare. 
and it just has like real positive cool memories associated cool people associated with them so those are my favorites okay so i was going to ask you the question if you had if you're told tomorrow you got one last basketball game to ever play in what shoes am i what playing shoes were you playing i got to play in 11s okay i got to play in jordan 11s probably some space jams the older ones though if i can find them maybe some concords um but yeah i have to go out in style like that and i always wanted to wear them i just never never worn them in games the shoe I, the jordan retro I actually like hooping in the most is 10s and i have played in those a lot not in any NBA college game, but pickups and practices and whatnot. But I would play my last game if I had to in Jordan 11s. All right, so picture this. Game seven, NBA finals. Yeah. You're down by one. Yeah. Jimmy Butler's guarding you. Yeah. You've got the ball. A couple seconds left on the clock. What move are you going to do? Well, if I, I can't get the scanning report out on myself too much. You're going you're gonna to put me on probably the left wing. Mm, I'll take either actually, but the ball's probably going to be left hand to right hand, and I'll try to shoot a three. I'm sure. Nice. Left hand to right hand. If he bites too hard on my feet, and I'll I'll try to take the space and, and get by him, but I will try to put the ball in my left hand to pull up. And if you could have dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would it be with? Dinner with anybody dead or alive. I'm gonna go. I'd have to go Martin Luther King Jr. Ooh. I think that'd be the best one. Any particular reason? Oh, just he has so much to offer, I'm sure. And I'm sure there's probably a lot more that he would have liked to have said and could have said, and I'd be interested to hear all of it. Nice, I like that. Okay, so final question. Can you share with me your biggest dream? My biggest dream would probably just to be take basketball as far as I can, um, try to find as much success in this part of my life that I can to set me up in order to do something impactful when I'm done. And that can be in a variety of ways, but my dream would, would be to take the either platform or whatever I've gained from playing and, and be able to do something that um, allows me to be remembered as something other than a basketball player, where they can think of me as doing something else first. I'm positive. Nice. I like that, man. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Ken Johnson. Appreciate yes, it. You're yes, a gentleman. Sir. It's a lot of fun.